Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Gotta Get Running. I'm Phil Hargis. Alongside of me is Chris Farley. Chris, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, Phil. Thank you. Busy, busy getting ready for our upcoming races and everything. Uh, one of the, the, the goal of this show is to bring the recreational runner and, and athletic participant here in the Washington, D.C. area. Um, we want to make sure that everybody is out there getting active, staying physically active, staying healthy, and helping contribute and give back to, to our local community here. And many of you know, are familiar with Susan G. Komen and the wonderful work that, work that they do with, with breast cancer and breast cancer research and everything. And next weekend, there is gonna be a three day, the Susan G. Komen three day for the cure event taking place here in Washington, D.C. It's an incredible event where thousands and thousands of participants get together and they go walking 20 miles a day for three straight days. Yeah, Chris, it's, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing event. And, and you know, a lot of the components of our races that we put on, they do have a charity component, I should say, and it's a, a huge part of what we do. And I think the Susan G. Komen is just the biggest and the best of, of all those charities out there. And they really show how it should be done and how to raise a significant amount of money for such a great cause. And, so. and, 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 and it's really something, I mean, there are so many people out there that are affected by breast cancer. I went to a, a, a retirement luncheon for somebody yesterday and found out that they were a survivor just finishing up their first radiation yep. treatment. So it really does affect a lot of people, even though you don't know about it every day. But in leading into that, we have a very, very special guest joining us live via Skype from San Francisco. We have Janae Fromm. She is the national spokesperson for the Susan G. Komen Three Day for the Cure. Janae, welcome to the program. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. It's good to be here, you guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, I know you're probably really busy there in San Francisco. You have an event <laughs> that you're out there for right now, don't you? Yeah, we're um, we're doing our event here. We're in the middle of day two. In fact, we're at the lunch stop. Um, and so we've got walkers that are coming in and they're gonna get something to eat and um, you know head out. They're about at the halfway point for day two. So they're doing great. Well, that's, that's great. Uh, and you guys are going to be here next week. And we wanted to talk about the, the race here in D.C. But first off, if you could give us kind of a short background on, on Susan G. Komen. Who was Susan G. Komen? And what was the significance of Susan G. Komen? Well, Susan G. Komen is um, Ambassador Nancy G. Brinker's sister. And at a very young age, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And of course, at that time, this would have been 30 some years ago, um, we didn't talk about breast cancer as a society. And we, in, in fact, we people weren't even allowed to print the word breast in newspapers. And, and um, so there was a lot of misunderstanding about the disease. And because of that, there wasn't the same amount of early detection that we see now. Um, Although everyone did everything they could for Susie Komen, she did die from the disease. But before she died, she um, asked her sister to do whatever she could to fight this disease. And so Nancy Brinker made that promise that she would do whatever she could to end this disease. And that single promise has grown throughout these years into what we know now as Susan G. Komen for the cure. So, you know, people often ask me, can one person make a difference? And, and that's probably my best example of a single person who made such a difference in a cause and really in the world. That's great. How, how many of these races are the uh, not a, not a race? How many of these walks do you have throughout the uh, throughout the country during the year? Yeah, it's you're right. It's not a race. Right. It's a, it's a non-competitive event. Um, there are 15 of them each season. So we start um, in the so all the way through until uh, basically Thanksgiving. And so it's a it's a it's a good season for us, and we are all across the country. Yes, yeah, so, and, and then that leads you to Washington, D.C. next week, and you'll be here in Washington, D.C. Um, October 8th That's right. We're right about the... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, go, go, I'm sorry. You go right ahead there. We're, just gonna sure. look, we're, we're talking um, about that you're coming to D.C. next week. We're about in the middle of our season, and we're going to be there next weekend. And um, so we're crossing the country uh, throughout the week this week. We're going to leave here Sunday, and we'll be with you guys on Friday morning. <laughs> it's a good thing you have to walk across the country there. <laughs> That'd be so, so next weekend is... Uh, you know what? Go ahead. No, you go ahead. 
<laughs> we have a little bit of a timeline well, here. I was just going to say that, that, yeah, next weekend we'll be there. We start Friday morning. We go Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and we'll be doing our closing ceremonies right there at the Washington Monument grounds on Sunday. Yeah, there was one interesting thing that I was going to talk about here. You talked about how, you know, several, like years ago that the breast cancer was sort of something that wasn't talked about. We have a guest here later on our show who is a survivor who is actually participating in your opening ceremonies. And she has flown here all the way from the country of Chile down in South America. And they were talking about earlier before the show about how breast cancer is not really well, is not talked about in public there. It's still one of those things that society in, in foreign countries is not willing to openly talk about, which is, which is unfortunate. Yeah, you make a really, really great point. You know, as far as we've come in the United States, this really is a global epi epidemic in many ways. A, a person dies every 69 seconds somewhere in the world from breast cancer. And that's, uh, that's almost hard to... And there are places in the world where um, men still divorce their wives if they're diagnosed with breast cancer. It's 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 really still misunderstood. And and you know this is October. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And when you look at it's all around you know uh, us here in America. But this is a global um, a disease, and and we really need to be doing everything we can to make sure that we continue that global fight, not just here um, in America. How many walkers are we expecting to be in this event uh, here next next week in D.C.? Well, um, series-wide, we're going to have about um, 30,000 participants. About 2,000 of those will be in D.C. this year. So we're looking for good numbers there. That's a, that's a great size event for us. It's, it's running about the same as it did last year, which we're really proud of. And um, we're, just, we're just excited to get going there, really. One thing I heard you talk about on a YouTube video I was watching was just the inspirational stories that each one of these people have. Can you share with us maybe one or two that, that have really touched you? Oh, yeah, there's so many. And that's one of the, that's one of the very best things about what I do is I, I get to hear those stories, you know, every weekend. And I think recently one of the, one of the most significant stories I heard was I was, we were walking, I think it was in Michigan, and um, there was a woman walking who, she was coming on a vent, um, she was walking because a, a friend of hers had been diagnosed with breast cancer, she had raised all of her money, and she got to thinking, you know, I'm going to go on this never had a mammogram. So she thought, I better go in and get one, just so if people ask me, I can say I've had one. Well, she did that the week before the event, and she was actually diagnosed with breast cancer the Thursday before the event started on Friday. So that weekend, as she was walking, you know, she was she was walking all weekend, and then she was going to be starting treatment um, just that next week. Wow. That that kind of thing, as um, as kind of uh, incredible as that sounds, that's not all that unusual. We and when I hear those things, I I'm just so blown away at the impact that we're making. You know, not just from awareness and, and, you know, shows like yours that are getting the word out, but also from, you know, an individual basis. People are, um, are changing their behaviors based on this event. Just by the fact that these events are actually occurring is, is completely w raising awareness of the breast cancer issue for sure. Um, so yeah. with regards to the fundraising and everything, you just you kind of started to get to that. So with each one of these participants, there is also, in addition to the, to the, to the entrance fee, there's also a fundraising requirement of, of some sort, I would imagine. Yeah, there is, and that, that's kind of what makes us unique. And, and, and this is going to, if you're impressed with people walking three days and 60 miles, then you're going to love this. Um, each one of our participants commits to $2,300. So for every person that you see next weekend that's walking, they have raised at least $2,300, which in, in this economic time, you know, is, is pretty phenomenal. And so they've started months and months and months ago, not just training, because you have to train. You know, the only way to train for, for walking is to walk. And um, they have to do a lot of training, but they also do a lot of fundraising. And what that translates into is, you know, since we, we started this event in 2003, this event has raised more than $500 million. Wow. Just this single event has raised more than $500 million for this cause. And um, it, it's, it's phenomenal to be a part of something like that. That's, that is unbelievable. That's very powerful. Um, can you talk to us about what the participants' days look like? They're walking three days, 60 miles. Like, you're in the middle of the one in San Francisco. What are they going to do at the end of the day there? 
Okay, so um, I'll just give you an overview of the event. So we start on Friday morning with an opening ceremony that's really inspirational and motivational and really lets people connect back to the reason why they're here and why they're doing this. Um, and then they do walk their 20 miles on Friday. And when they get done with that, they walk into camp. Now, camp, like... Really mobile city. We have um, we have hot food for them, great meals. Uh, we have um, hot showers. They actually shower in the back of a semi truck. That's that's really actually kind of um, it's it, they they tell me it's the best shower they've ever had. Yeah. Uh, After 20, 20, 20 miles. I don't know how much of that sure. is due to volume. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we have in, um, we've got like a camp show where they can, uh, there's some games and things like that. And they all get together under this huge dining tent. And then um, we have an area called Three Day Main Street where they can go to the Energizer Lounge and they can get massages. Um, they can visit our other sponsors. Um, they can have home computer set up. It's kind of a, I don't, I don't know if any walkers are nearby. I'll hear me say it. It's, a little, it's like a little mini vacation, except with a lot of walking. <laughs> so so that, I mean, the camps sound like they're a lot of fun, and it's a great chance for people to get together and share stories yeah. and take a nice warm shower in the best shower of all time in the back yeah, of a pickup amazing. truck. <laughs> but, uh, what are, so that's great. That's fun at nighttime. What, what kind of entertainment and crowd support do they have out there for the walkers during the day? So when they get up in the morning after they've had a you know a hot breakfast, they take off and and um, our crew is an all volunteer crew. So we've got about 300 crew members on each event that take care of our walkers all weekend, and they don't just take care of them; they they entertain them. I this our lunch pit stop or our lunch stop theme here is the 60s and so they've got they're dressed up in kind of peace loving things and um we've got cheering stations along the routes where family and friends can come to um we'll have music and um we have what are called sweep vans that if someone just needs a little help along the route um you know, getting getting up a large hill here in San Francisco, right. or just moving to the next pit stop will sweep them up. But all of the pit, all the sweep vans are are decorated, and they're they have themes, and and um, it really is. It's um, I participate in other types of endurance events, but this is is unique in that it is it's a community, and you make friendships on this event that last a lifetime, and. As crazy as it sounds, it is it is fun. It is three days of crazy, crazy beautiful fun. And it's all for a tremendous cause. Um, we 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 have the, a list of all your cheering stations. We're gonna we're gonna post those later. Uh, we'll we'll have oh, those graphics for the for the viewers there, and we'll also have them uh, on our website as well. And they can also refer back to your website, which is the. Th 3day.org, isn't that correct? You got it. Okay. That's it, the3day.org. The3day.org. Um, we'll post that for sure as well. We also have Great. with us uh, later today in the program, we have Sandy Curtis, who has been asked by the Susan G. Komen 3-Day for the Cure to participate in the opening and closing ceremonies of the Washington, D.C. event. Could you please tell the viewers what they might expect to see for the opening and closing ceremonies this year? Well, I, I won't I won't give any of the of the good stuff away, but I Darn. will say that that opening and closing is um, inspirational and emotional, and and um, one of the things that's a l kind of iconic to the three day is um, some some people are specially chosen to carry flags during the opening ceremonies, and those flags say things like my mother or my sister or maybe birthdays or anniversaries or they really are the reasons why people walk and um, when those people come out on stage you know holding those flags and you see someone and you realize that this isn't just you know a person who's decided to do something crazy like walk a bunch or or a charitable person who's raised a bunch of money this is a person who's been touched by this disease this is a person who's held their mother's hand when she was in a chemo chair this is a person who was looking into to her sister's eyes, you know, when she was passing away, and, and this is a person who's made a promise, and and that is a significant part of what this event is, and it's what sets us apart in many many ways because we are never, although we go 60 miles, we're never very, we're you know only a few steps away from uh, the cause and the people that it's affected.